is a reproduction of one of Michelangelo's greatest works, Moses. If you will be patient with me, I'd like to talk to you about this wonderful soul that Michelangelo caught so magnificently in marble. For centuries, people have been puzzled by these horns. Well, in the original book of Exodus, the Hebrew text tells us that when Moses came down from the mount, Karen came from his head. Well, Karen is the Hebrew word for horn, but it also is the Hebrew word for rays of light. Later artists, like Doré, show Moses with rays of light coming from his head. Here is a photograph of the original statue in Rome. Now notice, notice the likeness to Charlton Heston, who plays Moses in the Ten Commandments. We generally think of Moses either as the prophet with the long white beard, or as he is portrayed in this, this canvas painted by Van Dyck in England about uh, 1640, a baby found in the bulrushes by the daughter of Pharaoh. Incidentally, this is the first time this Van Dyck has ever been exhibited. Yet, there is a whole lifetime between the baby in the basket and the bearded prophet receiving the tablets of the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. These very tablets were actually carved from the red granite of the holy mountain itself. This Canaanite lettering of the late Bronze Age is a forerunner of the Hebrew alphabet, the Greek alphabet, and our own alphabet today. The Bible omits the first 30 years or so that brought Moses to manhood. To fill in those missing years, we turn to ancient historians, such as Philo and Josephus. Philo wrote during the lifetime of Jesus of Nazareth. And Josephus wrote some 50 years later. These historians had access to documents long since destroyed, or perhaps lost, like the Dead Sea Scrolls. To film the Ten Commandments, we, we rolled our cameras on the very ground that Moses walked. Here from the, from the land of Goshen, across the Red Sea, down through the deserts of Shur and Sin, to Mount Sinai, the holy place of God. This, this haloed sun was above the mountain as our caravan descended. No, Moses' life is one of the greatest adventure stories ever put between the covers of a book. Here, here in the first chapter of Exodus, by the merciless edict of the pharaoh, Ramesses I, all the newborn Hebrew male children were condemned to death. To save the baby Moses' life, Moses' mother, Yoshebel, played by Martha Scott, placed him in a basket daubed with pitch and set him afloat on the great river Nile. The swift current, as though guided by divine power, sweeps him to the feet of Bithia, Pharaoh's daughter, played by Nina Foch. The princess, having no son of her own, adopts the baby and raises him in the very court which had condemned him to death. Where can you find greater drama than that? Moses grew to manhood and power, a prince of Egypt. The old pharaoh had died, and his son, Seti, played by Sir Cedric Hardwick, had become pharaoh. Did Seti find out this prince of Egypt was a Hebrew slave? What did Moses do when he learned the truth about himself? That he, a rich and powerful prince, was less than the dust beneath the wheels of Pharaoh's chariot. And Seti's own son, the powerful, magnificent, fearless Prince Ramesses, played by Yule Brunner. Who was it that betrayed Moses to him? Was it the throne princess, Nefertiri, played by Anne Baxter? Or did the old nurse, Memnet, played by Judith Anderson, 
betray the secret of Moses' birth that she had kept for 30 years. Then there was the cynical, fastidious Baca, the master builder of Egypt, played by Vincent Price. Was he the informer? Or was Moses betrayed by Dathan, taskmaster over his own people, played by Edward G. Robinson? Very well. I will bargain with you. If what you say pleases me, I will give you your price, Olokt. If not, I will give you the point of this blade through your lying throat. Agreed? Agreed. When Moses learned that he was Hebrew, and he looked upon the sufferings of his own people, the Bible tells us Moses killed. How did he escape from Egypt? And who gave him sanctuary from Pharaoh's sentence of death? Go ahead, strike your bows. Which of Jethro's seven daughters did he marry? From whom did he learn the ways of a shepherd? Was it from Jethro's eldest daughter, Zephyrah, played by Yvonne de Carlo? What made Moses return to Egypt and almost certain death when the young Ramesses became the new Pharaoh? Why did God command Moses to bring the ten plagues upon Pharaoh and the Egyptians? If there is one more plague on Egypt, it is by your word that God will bring it. And there shall be so great a cry throughout the land that you will surely let the people go. Come to me no more, Moses. For on the day you see my face again, you will surely die. Did Nefertiri revenge the killing of her own son? How did the death of the firstborn free the slaves? Go out from among us you and your people, I set you free. Who organized the greatest migration the world has ever seen, the Exodus? Was it Joshua, the young leader played by John Derrick, who became the powerful military commander of his people? The Bible tells us little of Joshua's youth, or his hopes and loves, or of those who may have loved him like Lilia, played by Deborah Paget. How did God harden Pharaoh's heart that he called forth 600 of his war chariots to destroy Moses and the children of Israel? How did they escape with Pharaoh's chariots at their backs and the Red Sea before them? Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you took us away to die in the wilderness? All this happened 3,000 years ago, but we're still fighting the same battle that Moses fought. Are men to be ruled by God's laws, or are they to be ruled by the whims of a dictator like Ramesses? Are men the property of the state, or are they free souls under God? The story of Moses, as told in the Bible, is a life of struggle and defiance. A life of love and battle and sacrifice and murder. A life of achievement and disaster. Of humiliation and glory. Moses is one of the world's greatest human beings. And human he was to the point of sin. And holy to the point of seeing God. And receiving from him the law by which men may live in peace and freedom the Ten Commandments.